G'day. This is my Grow SL Rapid Flush internal wall system and my problem is that it no longer flushes when I push either button. I'm a bit of a DOI person and I like to try and fix things myself if I can rather than call in a tradie. I've saved quite a few bucks over the years by finding solutions on YouTube and the like. So I put this video together as a payback and also in the hope that it may help someone else in the same position as me. There is very little stuff on YouTube on how to perform maintenance on these Grow internal flush systems, particularly for the model I have and what is there. There isn't anything in English, so I'm reenacting what I did to fix my system. I can't speak for other brands, but I would like to add that this is a very easy fix if you're a handy person and one that's not daunted by the fact that you are working through a small hole in the wall. Wall tasks can be done by hand other than the need to use a spanner to disconnect the water supply. Okay, let's get started. Okay, first of all, to lift off the cover plate, you just lift it up and pull the bottom forward and it's just these two little doodads here, which holds everything in place. You slip the uh, pipe off. This all works on, um, this system works on air inside here. There's a, um, well, you can't quite see, but there's a bellows inside here. And uh, that creates a puff of air, which goes down the pipe and goes to the discharge valve, the discharge valve and it pushes up and hence flushes your toilet. So in my case, with the fact that it's not flushing, the problem is going to be either in the bellows or down there somewhere. So first of all, we need to turn the water off and that's, that can be done by, in my case, this little tap up here, which I have to rotate 90 degrees. Now we just let all the water go by lifting up the discharge valve. Okay, the next step is to disconnect the water. Uh, the only tool you're going to need for this job is your trusty shifter. Um, so I'll just go set it about probably uh, three quarters of an inch. Just go and undo that. You're a bit restricted for movement, but there. Let's tuck that up out of the way. Okay, with that out of the way, now we want to remove the float valve. Um, it's quite easily done. This little tab there, just little tab there, just gonna lift that up and pull, pull the unit forward. Just be careful with this, this um, float valve, it's only made of um, polystyrene, so just be careful not to damage it. Okay, the next step is to remove the, dis, uh, the um, discharge unit. Just give it a, a slight turn, probably about a quarter of a turn to the left, anti-clockwise. And then the second part, it just pulls up. Now there's the two components, there's your discharge unit, it just connects in there like that. And that's your unit there, I imagine it's just in two pieces, so it just makes it easier to get out through the hole. Okay, my problem turned out to be this hose, it um, lost its elasticity over time and uh, it's all gone hard and it just had just popped off, so that was all that was wrong with mine. So I've got this replacement pods with 2mm in diameter, internal diameter. You just plug that onto there. And then put everything back the way we pull it out. I'm sorry we don't have this hose just flapping around. But 
so if you thought, uh, as you can see there, a little hole up, which it's a bit hard to uh, show with a camera when my uh, fist down the hole, so it's, the hose just fits into that little clip, I suppose you'd call it. Okay, and before we put the cover plate back on, we we'll just check that everything was working. We connect the pipe onto the uh, push button below. <laughs> uh, just a matter of putting the plate back on. Oh. 